This is a how-to video on how to take your portfolio images in Lightroom and export them as a PDF format. The PDF needs to have one image per page and have a caption at the bottom with your name, the title of the image, title of the series, and the year. We're going to learn how to do that in this how-to video, including how to adjust the layout of each image on each page so that you have a consistent looking portfolio. In a previous video, we learned how to select the images and sequence them and organize them into a collection in Lightroom. So at this point, you should have a collection in Lightroom that you're ready to format and lay out as a PDF and then export and save on your computer as a PDF. Let's learn how to do that. Navigate to your portfolio collection. That's going to be in the collections panel. In the collections panel, uh, if you created it using um, a different step. And then um, you should have your portfolio in a collection here. This one is called Art 197 Portfolio. If you're in a different class, it may be Art 206 Portfolio or Art 205 Portfolio. So make sure that your portfolio is here in your collection. You should have 15 to 20 images depending on the assignment for the class. And um, the first thing you wanna do is go ahead and add captions. And how you do that, the caption is gonna be um, what is going to be the information about your photograph. It's going to be the label that's under your photograph uh, in the PDF format. So it's really easy to add captions. You just navigate to the library panel. I'm sorry, the library module. And the module picker is here at the top of the interface. So the first workspace is the library. It's called a module. Then on the right-hand side and the panels on the right-hand side, um, navigate to the metadata panel. In the metadata panel, you'll find a line for caption. Now you have to do this on each photo, uh, on each photograph or artwork or, and digital file. So um, you're gonna start with your name, title of the image, series, if it's part of a series or body of work, that's the project title, right? And then the year it was created. So. Once you write your caption here, you can copy this and paste it onto each image. Um, and then you would just change uh, the relevant information because your name is obviously going to stay the same. Maybe the series will stay the same for a couple of images um, and just modify it for every, um, for every uh, picture or digital file, I mean. So Command C on a Mac or Control C on a PC copies this. Then you go to the next image. Command V is paste or control V on a PC. And then you go to the next image. Here we have an example. Delano Walters is the name of the artist. Evening attire is the name of the piece. Portraits exploring identity series is the name of the project. And then the year it was completed was 2021. Then you go to the next one. Here's um Okay. okay, you make sure each one has the title, your name, title. So this one doesn't have a caption, so you're going to want to caption that. Okay, uh, add a caption here. And you know you're going to modify it for each artwork with the relevant information. So what I'm doing now is going through and adding... Command V is pasting, and then of course you're gonna modify the information for each artwork. Okay, so now that we have a caption on each one, uh, we're ready to go into a different module. So you, you added the captions in the metadata panel in the library module. So now let's select all the images. <clears throat> a quick, quick way to select the images is to click on the first one 
and then Command A for all is on a Mac, Control A on a PC uh, is select all. Okay, so what you would do next, once they're all selected, go at the top of the module picker here, where you find the module picker, and click on the print module. That takes you to a different workspace. Keep in mind that the interface looks the same. There are right panels and left panels and a um, center content area and then a film strip at the bottom. However, um, what you find in each on the panels has changed. So what I would recommend is first go to at the very top here in layout style. Make sure you have single image contact sheet selected. Um, on the left hand panel, in case you're in a different format. Okay, either way, just go to single image contact sheet at the top here. Okay, then um, you would go go to every single panel and see if there's relevant information to adjust. I'm going to explain to you the, some of the relevant information. So layout style is single image, not picture package. You can scroll through and see what these are. It's single image contact sheet. Then image settings, I don't want to zoom to fill because that stretches my artwork. So don't have anything zoomed. Don't rotate either to fit. And what this does is if you have, if you have rotate to fit on, then it's going to rotate it this way. We don't want to keep turning our heads in your portfolio. Everything should be um, <clears throat> like this in a portrait format even if it's a landscape image, okay? And then, uh, so take all of these off. You don't want any of these check marks on. Stroke border is, if it if you add a stroke, is if you add that black box around it. I don't think that looks good, so don't have a stroke border on there. And then, for margins, this is really important. So you see how the margins are so huge here? What you would do is take the left, Take all of these sliders, oops, mm. I think it's this one, the cell size. So all of the sliders um, should have the smallest possible margins. So you, you select, so all of these margins here go all the way to the left, and then the cell size height and width goes all the way to the right, okay? And then keep square you want to turn that on. So what that does is it actually gives you some space. This is what Keep Square does. Uh, the best way to show it is under Guides. Um, and if you put Image Cells, it creates a cell that's a square shape. And that pl it plays in with your margins. So since these are the smallest margins possible, it's the margin to the square and the square kind of fits the page. So what that does is it brings the edges of the images, whether it's vertical or horizontal, whether it's portrait format or um, landscape format, you know, it sort of fits them within this square. Um, but I don't want to see the square, the cell, so I'm going to take the image cells off. But if you don't have keep square on, it takes it all the way to the edge, but then that's not a clean look because you still have to save room for the captions. So with Keep Square on, it um, pulls the image back and you have space at the bottom for your captions, okay? So then guides, nothing is on. Image cells, uh, image cells is just so that you can see the square shape there, how the shape of the cell, what it's fitting the image into, okay? but you don't have to keep that on because that doesn't look good, in my opinion. And then um, go to pay, go to photo info. Photo info, check mark on. The photo information is the artwork caption at the bottom. It could be, what what is showing at the bottom here? It could be file name, it could be equipment, it could be caption. Caption is what we want because that's the, the um, metadata that you filled in is a caption. I know you can't see it because it's super small right now, so I'm going to change it temporarily to 16, but you see how we have the caption here? It's better for it to be 12 most of the time because then it'll fit no matter how long your title is. Go image by image and make sure that this, 
I like it to fit under the picture that it doesn't get bigger than the picture. So as long as it's smaller or even with the edges, I think that looks good. Here's an example. If you go to 16, it's spilling out bigger than the image. Um, I don't think that looks great. So usually 12, a font size of 12 will work really well. But you test it and go picture by picture. Uh, go digital file by digital file and make sure it fits nicely without spilling off of the edges, okay? If you have room to go to 14 without spilling out of the edges, that's great, but make sure you test. So like this one is spilling out of the edges, so I'm gonna go back to 12, okay? And then, per, um, so now you, you check to make sure you have a caption you remembered and the caption is correct for every single image. You see this one doesn't have a caption. So if I missed one, what I would need to do is go back to the library module. I have that picture, that image file selected, go to caption here and command V to paste or type it in or go ahead and um, update the information here. And this one has it, this one has it. Okay, then I can go select all again, command A. It's very important to have them all selected when you're in the print module. You see at the bottom it says page one of 20 because that tells you you have 20 pages, 20 images, because they're all selected. And then, um, so we're back to print job. So photo info caption font size 12, that's where we stopped. Next panel is print job. You're gonna print to the printer. That's very important, not a JPEG file. Your portfolio is not gonna be JPEG format. It's gonna be PDF. So you can save as PDF when you're sending it to a printer because you're gonna have the option to save as PDF instead of printing it. So make sure in print job, print to printer. Then the print resolution, we're gonna put 300 here. And 16-bit output, usually that's good for um, higher resolution, especially um, you know if your images were um, shot on a digital camera and you shot raw files. So you can keep that check marked on. You don't need to do anything right now in color management. So the next step, uh, just double check everything in the portfolio and make sure you didn't miss anything. Here we go, I missed another caption. So you wanna check every single image and make sure all the captions are there, make sure everything is correct the way you want it. If you miss anything as I showed you before, you would go to library module, go to caption and add it here, okay? Um, since this is a demonstration video, I'm not going to spend too much time on that, but at least now you know how to fix it. So look, now I'm back, but I only have one image selected. It says page one of one. If I export this, I'm only going to have a one-page portfolio. So you want to command A, select all. Make sure that it says page, 20 pages. If you click on the first one, it'll say page one of 20 and so on. Okay, but you want to say of 20 or 15, if you have a 15 Im uh, image portfolio, depending on your assignment. Um, okay, then the next step is not to hit print. Print will send it to a printer. You want to save as PDF, so you want more options. More options are indicated by this dot, dot, dot after the word printer. So printer dot, dot, dot means or something else. You're gonna get a dialog box to choose. So you click on that and you get this dialog box. Okay, I have high detail, high details here. It might be small like this. I like to show all the details or you can hide the details. It's up to you. But what you're looking for is PDF here at the bottom. You don't wanna send it to the printer. The first thing that's gonna come up is the printer title and everything. You wanna look at the bottom and see PDF save as PDF. Now where you're going to save it is really, really important. And what you're going to call it is really important so you can find it later. So you want to go to your external hard drive, okay? And you want to go to the folder that you, you have for the class. So if your class is Art197, you would click on your folder of Art197 um, or whichever folder you created for this class. Make sure you create the appropriate folder. So Art197 or Art205 or Art206, double click, and then you should have a folder for 
portfolios. If you don't, you can click on new folder and call it portfolio and hit create. Okay. You have to have a folder called portfolio. It's really important so you can identify it. Okay. Make sure you have your file organization really well, uh, well done. So then is the name of your file. So it's .pdf automatically since you're saving it as a PDF, but all of this weird stuff here is the name of the Lightroom catalog and the image and so on. No, you don't need all that. You highlight that so you can delete it and or if it's highlighted, you can type right over it. So what you wanna do is your first name underscore last name underscore um, portfolio, okay? And then um, I think that's good enough uh, if you want to put the year, uh, 2023, you can. That way you know which, which portfolio it was. Or if you want to put the class, Portfolio Art 197 or Art 205 or Art 206, you know, you can do that. And then um, click on, you don't need the author here, but it's probably going to say your name. You can delete that. It doesn't really matter. The most important thing is save as and the title here, uh, and then that it's going into a portfolio folder on your external hard drive so you can save it and take it with you. So click on save and it's exporting it. It says preparing print job in the top left corner here of the interface. That means it's preparing it. So once the status bar is completed and this message goes away, that means it's ready. And what you can do is go to that folder and open it up and check your portfolio. You don't know how many times I've gotten portfolios that are one page by accident. Okay, you wanna check that your portfolio opens and it's 15 to 20 pages depending on your assignment. So click on um, the finder window, click on the go menu, go to your, um, computer, click on your hard drive, um, and navigate to the folder where you saved your portfolio. Mine is in Art, then Art 197, then Portfolio, then here it is, first name, last name, Portfolio, Art 197. Notice that you might have a different view here. The view is up here. I'm viewing it as a list, or as icons, or as columns, or as gallery. Okay, I really like the list view because then I can see also the size. The size is 303 megabytes. In another how-to video, I'm going to show you how to reduce the file size of this PDF. It's really important to open it and reduce the file size and save it as a reduced file size because you cannot send this 303 megabyte portfolio to anybody by email and it's gonna take a long time to upload and to load. So you do need to reduce the file size before you submit it on Canvas. And I'm gonna show you how to do that in another how-to video. So you're gonna to need to watch all the how-to videos in order to complete this whole portfolio project because it's several, several steps. Okay, and so you double click on this and you open it first of all and to check everything. So Command minus on a Mac or Control minus on a PC helps you zoom out minus. Okay, so now we have page number one with the caption. Page number two, caption three, caption, there it is. And you scroll through, make sure you're happy with your portfolio, that everything is as it should be, you know. Whoops, missing caption, I would have to redo it. Missing caption, I would have to redo the portfolio. Okay, so if you see anything wrong, you have to redo it and save over that one. Um, all right, but that was just a demonstration, and plus um, you might find something that you would need to correct, so it's important to check it, right? Um, let's see how to reduce the file size. First of all, how to add artist statements. You need to add artist statements to this portfolio. This is just the image portion, and then how to combine them into a single PDF, okay? and then how to uh, reduce the file size. Those are the next how-to videos. Thank you for watching.